Bringing the inside outdoors is the perfect way for you to maximize your home's footprint. Hi, I'm Vicki Payne. And I'm Sloan Rudder. Welcome to For Your Home. Today's dream house decorating duties have us focusing on the porches and the backyard. Now this house has three porches, one screened in porch and two covered porches. And in fact, we even have a great stone fireplace on this porch, which is perfect for setting up a great cozy conversation area are just kicking back for the afternoon. Today we're going to show you how you can bring indoor style to the outdoors. So sit a spell, it's Porches FYH style. For Your Home is made possible by Anderson Hardwood, committed to producing distinctive, environmentally responsible hardwood flooring while helping to create a better planet for today and tomorrow. For more information, go to andersonfloors.com. Anderson, naturally. And by And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Riverside Furniture. Covered porches provide endless decorating opportunities. This one has a beautiful slate floor, a gorgeous stone fireplace with a gas log in it, and we have a stairway that leads down to a lower lawn level. The screened-in porch offers the same spectacular views and beautiful stone flooring. But because this is a screened-in porch, it allows for insect-free dining and it allows us to create a great cozy conversation area. It's also just steps off of the kitchen and the casual living areas of the home. We want to tie these two porches together and whenever you're trying to make that connection, the best way to do it is usually with the colors you work with. Mom, the furniture just came in. I unpacked everything. Oh, gosh, Look at our it. color palette. Isn't this gorgeous? I love these colors. The warm cocoa brown and the spa blue. I yeah, know, I love that. It's perfect. It's perfect. Now, you'll notice that this is the same fabric. Well, that's because we selected our furniture from the exact same collection. Now, of course, we thought we could do that because everything would match, but really, our idea behind it was so that we could take pieces from one porch and put them on the other. If we were having a party and we needed additional seating, guess what? We can just grab, grab a chair. That, bring it over. It makes a lot of sense to try to match up all your outdoor furniture to look the same. Now, the other thing that we're doing to tie these two together is rugs. We ordered two rugs of the same style and the same color. Now, this is an outdoor rug. You could also use this inside, and it has this great blue and cocoa brand. Now, we got a little bit darker because that light color would really show dirt badly. So now, with our rug, we've got an olefin fiber in here. And what an olefin fiber will do for us is it will allow us to clean it up with just soap and water. And best of all, it's not going to mildew. For our screened-in porch, we selected four spectacular motion chairs. When they say motion, they really mean motion. Check these chairs out. Aren't they beautiful? It's got a fabulous rocking motion to it. And also, here's the big seller. This is what did it for Mom and I, the swivel. Isn't this great? It allowed Mom and I to create a cozy conversational area, and this way people could ease in and out of it without bumping into anyone. Instead of doing a coffee table, we decided to use one of the end tables as our centerpiece. It was the right size, right height, and of course, the right shape. Now, when using something like this that's not typically a coffee table as a serving piece, maybe if you were to even use an ottoman at home, think about using trays. These work perfect. Isn't this a great copper tray? We've got our fall glasses set up here with the white crisp linen. 
really nice touch. And because we have such a neutral palette, if you wanted to add a bigger punch of color, take a look at this assortment for spring. The lime green and the turquoise, and of course our fresh flowers just really add a pop. Now remember what I said to you about adding the color to our chairs from the other porch? Well, Jacob, toss me a pillow. Here's our aqua from the other porch. And we have a great punch of color that we just borrowed from next door. Don't you just love this spa blue color? I tell you, I can't decide, did I buy the pillows first or did I get the scarf? Either way, aqua is a great color to brighten it up out here. Now, the furniture that we've selected for this porch is a sofa, because that's always great for entertaining. Hey guys, just put it like right here in front of the window. And that's probably pretty good. We've got it centered on the rug right there. That'll be great. If you guys could bring that lounge chair in, Carl, that'd be super. Okay. By using a sofa like this, as I was saying, it's great for having conversations. We have the fireplace right there. And make sure I've got this going the right direction. Here we go. The uh, spa blue color is really like a neutral. It's not going to fight with, right over there, Carl, if you'll put that. It's going to flow really nicely and not fight. It's going to look like sky when you look out of the living room out to here. So regardless of the colors that we use in there, it's still going to match. Now, we got exactly the same color of cushions for our big easy armchair here, and that'll tie in beautifully. And then, remember when you're picking out things that you want to get good fabrics that are going to withstand wherever you're putting them. These fabrics are good indoors or outdoors. They won't mildew, and they won't fade from the sun. Now, we have an ottoman that, Steve, if you'll put that right here. Now, this piece could function two different ways. It could function as an ottoman, put your feet up on it, it's fine, or you can use it as a coffee table so that you can do serving off of it. For example, here we could put a big piece of glass on it if we wanted to, or just put a tray on it. Now, we have some end tables too that are going to match this up. Hey guys, could you bring me my end tables? Carl put one of them over here. And you know, this porch isn't really large, so by us using all the same color of wicker, That'd be great right there. It makes it flow. It doesn't chop it up. So if you're trying to make a small space look bigger, try to stay consistent with your color. Now, this great cocoa brown that Sloan was talking about, we ordered extra pillows in this brown so that they can go on our sofa. That just kind of breaks up the sea of blue that we have, ties in the brown. So we've got lots of great seating out here. It can be moved around really easy because it's wicker, it's lightweight. And we know that we have lots of options on how we can use these pieces as well. Mom and I thought in order to cozy up this patio, it would be a great idea to add some drapes. After all, this is just an expansion of the footprint of the house, right? So we're going to put drapes here. And now the tough part is deciding how to hang them. There's really three different ways that we could hang them out here. We're going to have them at every opening between beam to beam. So that would be the way that you would want to hang them, obviously, right? Beam to beam. Uh-oh, what happens when you get to this side and you don't have a beam? Well, you could drill directly into your masonry work here. Only thing is, is if you ever want to take those down or maybe the next homeowner doesn't want to have them up, you're going to have a hole here and have to call it a mason. So we thought, okay, we could do it to the face of our heading here, or we could drop down with a little hook and eye routine and just kind of have our rod hang low like this. The only thing is, is that our railing would start to interfere. So our best bet, Mom and I have decided, is to hang it right to the plate. And we selected a great indoor-outdoor fabric that's going to match nicely with our aqua pillows. Now you might wonder why I'm out here cleaning this mirror, or maybe you're asking yourself, why am I putting a mirror outside? Well, you know, anytime you use a mirror in a room, it always reflects back, makes everything look so much more inviting and so much bigger. So why not put one outside? By placing it on this big plain wall that we have, we can reflect back the stone fireplace, which is really beautiful, and the surrounding trees and the environment. So this is a great idea. Plus, glass always goes outside, and so does metal. Now, this has like a little grate in front of it, and you can either open it or close it. 
we're going to choose though to leave it open that way it really fills up this wall makes it look much bigger than it is it's a great affordable piece for about a hundred dollars now another thing that we're going to use out here to jazz up this and make it more like the inside are planters these planters are made out of plastic they look like regular wicker but they're plastic which is wonderful because we can leave them out year around and inside of them they have these great little zinc liners well, what we're going to do is we're going to put everyday seasonal plants in these. We're not going to plant them permanently. Instead, we're going to take, in this case, these white mums, and then just pop them in here. Then we can, maybe I'll have to put a little something under that to lay, raise it up a little bit. But by using these in this fashion, that means that in the summertime, we could maybe put house plants in here as the weather gets a little cooler, switch out to mums. Christmas time, you could even add some evergreens in here. So having plastic planters like this with a liner is a great way for you to decorate your porch with seasonal plantings. We can also move these around because they're really lightweight. And that's really important when you're thinking of items that you're going to reposition maybe from time to time in decorating. Make sure it doesn't take an army of people to move it around for you. But now that I look at these pretty close, I think I need to get my pruners out and maybe do a little deadheading on these moms. The stairs lead to a small lower yard. It didn't look this great just a few days ago. There were mud, rocks, and dead trees, and lots of cleanup work ahead. Our biggest concern centered around the trees. We asked Billy Stiles to check it out and share his recommendations. Take a look. A lot of people will purchase a lot because of the beautiful trees that are on it. And then during the construction process of their new home, a lot of the trees get serious damage. So for our trees on our lot, I've asked our organic gardener, Billy Stiles, to join us today and let me know what we need to do to save our trees. Hey, Billy, Gosh, you're Vicky, already working. Oh, we're already working here. We've really got a lot of problems on this lot. And uh, for example, here we've had damage during construction whenever they were leveling the land out. This is quite a wound. Uh -huh. And how we wanted, what we want to do to it is to come around and clean these edges up okay. so that what we call the wound wood can start closing back over to protect this heartwood. We can see we already got some flux coming out of it here. And, uh, now you call that flux, is flux, that the sap, the juice That's a sap it? and can also develop into diseases and uh -huh. uh, other issues that can occur from this. Also here on this tree we have what we call kink and bound roots. The root system is actually choking out this main uh, flare here and this leads to problems. We can also see here that we also have a lot of damage. Now this yeah. was here before this lot was cleared. Okay. So it's not always having uh, uh, trees damaged by construction. They could already be damaged or declining in the forest. Okay, so this tree has got problems with its root system just in its own natural growth. Right. We did some damage with a backhoe or whatever here. This could survive though if we clean it up maybe and will we be able to keep this tree? Well. One of, the, one of the things about trees in, in any kind of setting like this here uh -huh. is we buy a lot, a lot of times because of the trees. Exactly. And when we get these trees, uh, we don't understand the damage that's going to incur. Now this tree, particular tree here, uh, I would probably recommend it be taken out, even really? though it's a great tree, because of some of the issues that's already existing. Okay. And because if you can look at here, the massive amount of root damage that's incurred because of construction. So this tree is under stress. How far would the roots go typically with well, a tree Well, if you go up big? to the canopy, and if you were to draw a straight line down from the last limb out uh -huh. and go a third beyond that. So in, if you look at this- Wow, uh, that's in, underneath the house. The roots are underneath the house, underneath the footing, and they've been a lot of damage done to them. Okay, so this tree needs to come down. And I guess if it got bad and it did die, it could fall right on the house. Could and fall take on it out. the house. You could leave it also. And you know, now that you're the new homeowner, two or three years down the road, you have to pay to get it taken out. Okay. So on this here, I'd use wise judgment and uh, probably have the builder take it out. Okay, great. Now there's a, a lot of trees on this lot that, you know, some of them look good, some look bad, but we have a lot of dead limbs within the even good looking trees. Now a lot of the naturalists suggest that you leave these dead limbs for habitats for birds. Is that right. a good idea? It's always a good idea to create a habitat for, for wildlife, but one of the things we have to understand, this is no longer a, a wildlife uh, refuge. This is a urban yard. This is a setting where kids are going to be playing. Okay. And in that area, we've got to be uh, concerned about their safety. I think you should really take the limbs out based on uh, the tree's uh, 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 health uh -huh. or take the tree out and okay. clean it up and create a more safe habitat, more safer environment for, for the family that's moving in. Okay. So we'll need to get an arborist out here and get them up there and take right. out some of those dead limbs and, and limb it up. 
Billy, this tree right here, I think, is just a beautiful tree. Do you think we've got any damage to it, or is it in good shape? Well, this is a great tree, and someone probably bought this lot because of some of these great trees. But as we can see here, uh, Vicki, we have a lot of issues with the grade uh -huh. coming up. You know, a lot of builders do a lot of things to really try to preserve the life of trees, but it can't always happen. Yeah. And this is one of those instances where the grade and the pitch of the driveway has covered over the roots up to about six feet. Wow. And now these roots can't can't breathe. You mean this area up here where they've mounded right. up the dirt? This was the native area, and the grade, as you can see, built up here uh -huh. has been raised at least six feet. Now all okay. the roots are still under under where they were. Okay. So, so our roots back under here are, are like ground level? They're completely ground level, as it were. And again, we have all this dirt that's piled up against it, which we want to make sure that uh, would be taken out if this was a tree that we would recommend it to, to save. But I'm going to recommend that this one be taken out. Billy, no! Long term, it's what's going to happen. The, most of the majority of the roots are gone. Now, again, if we go back up to the canopy and look uh -huh. down, all the roots are up underneath the carport. Okay, now, what if we want to just risk it? We want to say, let's just take our chances, let's let it grow. What are going to be our signs that it's not going to survive? We'll start seeing die back in the tips of the trees. Some of the limbs are going to start dying uh, uh, from the lower levels up. Okay. And you want to keep an eye on that. You could come back in here and regrade some of this and open back up and maybe put a retaining wall. Okay. That would help with that. Okay, well, let's get uh, a notebook, a pad of paper. Let's start writing down some of the things for these trees and let you and I start developing a plan on how Good. we can save and as we much as we want. Okay, I'll Good. get the paper, we'll get it going. Great. As you can see, our landscaper took Billy's advice and revised the grade of the land to help reduce the stress on our big trees. We've also used rocks from the lot to create interesting and functional retaining walls. The lower lawn was created using those same boulders. We chose sod over seeds because we needed a great looking lawn fast. This park-like setting beckons visitors to descend the stairs to sit or take a walk in the natural area. An easy way to go from season to season is in the way that you display the candles that are out on your deck. Let's do some arrangements together. The main centerpiece is going to be this great big thick glass jug. I love these. They're fabulous for candles. They keep the wind from blowing them out. I've already got a wreath down here in front of me and I'm going to set the jug right in the center of it. It kind of anchors it and makes it a little bit larger of a statement. Put an ivory candle in. We always want to use ivory in the fall season. Then got a collection of little twigs that have been painted a bright mustard color. And then we're going to scatter those around. I'm going to add these dried nuts and there's a variety of colors in there. So we've got all the fall colors and it picks up exactly the colors that are in our wreath. Just keep adding them. And you can, you know, really take your time placing the colors if you want, or just drop them in like I'm doing here. Once you have those in, make sure you take the time to have clearance between where your flame is and all of your accessory pieces. That's a great looking piece for the fall. And now for spring and summer, I'm going to use a citronella candle. That'll keep the insects away from us. And this potpourri is bright apple green colors. There's some little paper roses in here as well. And we're just going to place these down around our candle and give ourselves a totally different look for this season. And just pour them right on in. See how pretty and fresh that looks? We're using exactly the same jug and recycling it. And those of you who have a beach house or want a more summer look, Think about using a white candle in the same jug and adding some great seashells around it. It's a seasonal look that you can control yourself. Decorating the outdoors can be more fun than you may think. There are a lot of materials that you can use outside that feel right at home outside. For instance, glass, metal, ceramics, and especially terracotta. Take a look at this beautiful painted terracotta bowl. Isn't this great? Top it off with some wonderful glass balls, and there we go, a perfect touch of color. This will also serve as a great serving piece as well. But remember, if you live in a northern climate, that in the winter months when you winterize your porch and take stuff inside, don't forget to take in those decorative accents. Coming up next, a classic 
FYH Decorating Tip. Getting organized and staying organized around your own house, it's not really that hard. Now, the first thing that you need to do is have a file cabinet. Now, if you don't have a great home office that has a file cabinet, then you can buy a freestanding one. I've seen them at the office supply stores for as little as $40. If that's still not in your budget, think about getting some of these great cardboard files like we have here. That's less than $20. Now, you need to think, what does my family need to keep on hand? What kind of bills do we have? And then create great file folders for those that you can put right into your drawer. For example, everybody has utilities. So in there, put your electric, your gas, your phone bills, and how about those bills, period? The ones that always pile up, you know, on the kitchen counter. Well, the secret to that is to have two file folders. One that has the bills that are due the first of the month and another one that's due in the middle of the month or whatever your pay cycle is. Then when you open those bills, they can go right into this file. When you sit down and get ready to pay those bills, you'll have exactly what you need on hand. Now, the key to keeping up with Bills, that's easy. How about those really important papers that you have? Like, for example, your credit card numbers, your driver's license. Well, take those items, make a copy of those, file that copy into your files. So then if you need the number in an emergency, you always have it. These can go back into your wallet. Now, there's other part in business papers that you want to keep on hand, but you need to put them in a safe place, like your birth certificates, your deeds, your wills. Go ahead and make a copy of those as well. File them in your household file and put the originals in a safety deposit box. The secret to staying organized is to keep organized from the get-go. What I mean is as soon as you come in your house with your mail, organize it. This is what the mail on a daily basis looks like around my house. Now this, this is junk mail. It's going to go right into my basket right by the front door. This is for all the trash. Now, catalogs, magazines, I love to look through those, but I don't have time right now. So they're going to go into my second basket, which is designed just for the magazines and catalogs. Those bills we talked about, well, sometimes we don't have time to open them right away. They go into a smaller basket and they wait there until I have time to open them. And then, of course, you know where they go. So get organized, stay organized, you'll have more time for fun. I just love the panoramic view of nature that this elevated porch provides. It is the perfect backdrop for our comfortable and stylish wicker furnishings. You can relax with a good book and enjoy a lazy, sunny afternoon. The porch has ample room for a full-size sofa, tables, and a versatile ottoman. The stone fireplace and outdoor television make this spot a great entertainment destination. When it gets a little chilly, just close the all-weather draperies. This will allow the porch to be enjoyed year-round. The view from our screened-in porch is just as spectacular. The four deep-seated chairs swivel and rock. They set the stage for easy conversation and relaxed entertaining. The all-season fabrics, slate floor, and weather-resistant rug keep maintenance to a minimum and make this porch picture perfect. Our landscaper and organic gardener worked hand in hand to help lessen the impact of our construction on these beautiful trees. And it will preserve this spectacular natural setting for decades to come. You know, Mom, I have to say, even though we did a great job on the porches, there was mm -hmm. one woman who beat us out, and that's Mother Nature. Yeah, she did a great job. You know, and I'm confused now because these porches are both so beautiful, I can't decide which one I want to kick back and just spend the rest of the afternoon on. I uh, hate to break it to you, but we are on to the next dream home decorating project, and that is to tackle the master bedroom, which now everyone refers to as the owner's suite. Well, regardless of what you call your retreat at your house, you're going to love ours because we have got great luxurious fabrics, rich, thick rugs, and a beautiful neutral palette. See you next time on For Your Home. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out.
for your home is made possible by Shaw Floors offers distinctive flooring options to fit a variety of decors. Shaw strives to have a positive impact on the environment by producing recyclable products like Anso Nylon Carpets and Epic Hardwoods. Shaw, where great floors begin. And by... And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Riverside Furniture.